don't give a child reproof and correction, what's going to happen? What, what happens? They're going to get hurt, right? You've got to teach. How about people when they don't know the full scope of something? What happens? They're going to get hurt. See, reproof is going to either hurt the heart, hurt the soul, or hurt the mind. Reproof always does. No, no, that's what the word says. And people say, well, I know that's what the word of God says, but, well, then they're going to have consequences. What's the matter? Yeah, in the Bible it talks about, you know, when um, it's hard to kick against the pricks, right? A goad, whenever a um, person is driving in the Bible times, and you see it in Asia, Thailand, Bangkok, when they have a field in there, or even India, when they're driving their oxen, they have these long sticks with a, a, a nail in it, and as that animal starts to go to the right or to the left, you, you, you goad it, and it, and every, so that every time it does go the wrong way, it feels what? Pain. So God's word is a path that gives you no pain. When you, don't, when you go against it, you're going to get pain. There's just no way around this. Because the Bible covers 8,000 years of human experience, and humans haven't changed. We're still the same we've always been. We may have technical advancements, but we don't understand half of what it takes to survive, and we don't even understand how to make our own food. We don't know. So we're like little children who are totally dependent upon others and not able to handle ourselves. How many of you have been on a survival mission that's thrown out in the jungle and had to survive? Now, I was trained. I went to Sears School, and they taught me how to survive in a jungle. So you throw me in a jungle, I'll survive. You can throw me in the forest, I can survive. If, you're out, if you haven't got a compass, how do you know which way is north? All the moss is on which side of the rock? The north side. So if you want to go east, you keep traveling where? With uh, going in the direction here. Like all the rocks have moss on the right, on, on, on facing north. So you know which north is. Now you can know which way north is. Now you can know which way is east and what? West and south. So you can be thrown in a place and still be able to know how to get around. Does that make sense? All right. How do you make water when there isn't any? How would you survive without water? You can't. How do you get water? See, I'm, I had the advantage of being taught. Someone had to give me doctrine and what? Reproof. And when I almost killed myself, they stopped me and said, no, that's not a good idea. <laughs> All right. So when you don't have someone above you to give you guidance, then you're going to make painful mistakes. And God is much smarter than us, so I trust his judgment, and he has never been wrong. When I do it what I think or what someone else thinks, now we've got problems. So, in this next section, we need to understand what happens when we don't use God's word, when we don't have doctrine reproof from God. Now, what do we have on this side? Even when you went to, going back to Star Wars, didn't he have to have training? He had to be trained, and when he broke his training, he, he suffered the consequences. That was really, it, obviously, Lucas is Jewish, but that's a story of how it works. Right? He was an educated Jew. So was Einstein. You, you look at all these people that are the heads of our society. They're all bred from children with doctrine, reproof, and what? All the wealthiest people, all the top execs are all taught from child. To correct doctrine, reproof, and what? Correction so that they can excel and be the leaders in this day and time. So most of us, we don't want that. We want to do it our way. And this is where the problem comes in. We want immediate results. So when it, if, it take, if you do it this way, benefits or results may not be realized until years into the future. But you plant the seeds, you get used to it. How many here know how to play a musical instrument? Never learned. Yet all the people of 
high members of society, of humanity, all play a musical instrument. So everybody's learned. Everybody's developing their heart, their soul, their mind. They find out what works, what doesn't work. They get instruction. They know how to do it better and better, and that is able to accomplish great things. To be able to lead others, you've got to be able to lead first your what? Yourself. You've got to make yourself more, and that takes self-discipline. And if you have many people, rugrats, curtain climbers, and carpet commanders, you're going to have to give them what? Doctrine, and then what? Reproof and what? Correction, until they mature. Then, you, then again, as they get into 18 and 20 years old, you're there to give them what? More doctrine, and then reproof and correction to help them reach that point. But what's on this side? Well, on this side, there's this, this is where desires results are almost immediately received. This is how, rather than waiting all this time, you can get. But there's a problem about getting. You can't hold it. It's temporary. On this side, does it, can you get what you want by lying? Yes. By lying, you can get immediate results, but what happens when they found out it's a lie? You can cheat. You can go to school. You can take, look at what the other person's answers are, and then you can write the answers. But did you learn anything? And you can what? Steal. You don't have it. They've got it. I'll just take it from them without them knowing it. Now, the funny thing is, it's not funny, but I work with people, and I worked as a, I offered my house as a halfway point to get people from prison into life. I did that for about two years. Wow. People coming out of prison, they'll do anything to get out of prison, but once they're out and they're living with you, now it's a whole different thing. When you offer your house as a halfway house to help condition them from prison into real life, Ah, oh, that's a nightmare. Because now that they're out, they go back to the way they were that got them in the prison in the first place. They don't want to be... Same thing with people that are addicted to chemicals or to alcohol or to whatever. They don't want to change. They just want an excuse to keep going it. They just want to satisfy what restricts them. So these, this whole thing, will they lie? Yeah. Will they cheat? Yeah. Will they steal? Oh, yeah, they'll steal. Will they kill? Yes. Will they destroy? Absolutely. This side is the dark side, if you want to look at it that way. This is to lie, to cheat, to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the path. So where do you start with God's word? Integrity. You will not speak that which is not right, and you will always have integrity to do what you say, no matter what. That's just this point here. So when you try and teach people this, what happens? Well, their answer is, which these are things, real, legit answers that I've received from people that are addic have addictions, those that are you know, coming out of prison, everything. This is what they say. If they don't catch me, then I haven't done anything wrong. I want it what? Now. I tried being good. It doesn't work for me. I knew what was right to do, but it was too damn hard. Now, you've got to give people doctrine, and then as they act on it, then you give them what? Reproof and what? Correction. But most people don't want doctrine. They just want, tell me what to do and how to do it, and I'll make it work. No, you got to learn how to apply it. All right, so how important is doctrine? When you take music, someone gives you a musical instrument. Here, play it. Plunk, 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 plunk. Right? You need someone to give you what? Instruction. And then as you're doing this, no, 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 no. Use your, keep your posture straight. Breathe while you do it. Right? 
whether it's a violin or a clarinet, you have to be taught the sequence of how to perform to the best. All right. So let's give an example here. You have what? Doctrine, what? Reproof, and what? Correction. As they apply what you taught, you need to guide them. No, 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 that's not best. Here it is. But you cannot give reproof or correction without first giving what? Don't punish a child if you've never told them what to do. They'll just hate you. My mother would come in. When I was a kid, I was trying to keep the other children in line. And because it was so rough, because I'd never been taught how to do it, guess who got the whippings? I did. So you've got to understand that you can't punish a person unless you've given them the doctrine first. Now you can give them reproof or what? Correction. But just to nail them without having explained it, it's terribly wrong. Now here's something called the marshmallow test. Now watch what happens. Watch the children and see which one you are. I'm the good looking one. in that chair. All right, here's the deal. Marshmallow, for you. You can either wait, and I'll give you another one if you wait, or you can eat it now. When I come back, I'll give you two, another one, so then you'll have two. But stay in here and stay in the chair till I come back, okay? okay. All right. I'm gonna go do something and then I'll come back. It smells yummy. It smells really So it's up to you. You can have it now or you can wait. Okay? I'll be back. Stay in the chair, okay? Okay. So I'm going to leave and then I'll come back, okay? So you can either eat it right now or you can wait. Either way, okay? Okay. How'd you do? Did you do good? You did? Yeah. You wanted to eat it, didn't you? Yeah. So did I tell you to give you another one? Okay, now you can have both. You need them. Doctrine. <laughs> yes. They were given, and they were, they, and they tried to give, the girl tried to give him reproof, right? What was the correction? No second marshmallow. 
Now, when I give fellowships, what do I tell the kids that show up? I, they get five cookies. And I show them the cookies. And it's got a plate for them. And if they're good, they keep all five cookies. If they're bad during fellowship, they lose what? One cookie. And during the course of fellowship, I go, you now have four cookies. And the person goes, no. I go, <laughs> and they, they start up because they want all the cookies. And then at the end of fellowship, I give them four for the ones that did made one mistake, three for those who made two mistakes, and then for the very last, the person that gave and was the best and contributed, I gave him his five cookies, and then the other missing, the other two that the others could have had, go to him. Do the kids learn? Yes. The second time they come, they are so perfect. And people think, what do you do to them? How do you get them to behave? I don't get them to behave. I give them a choice. They can either have the cookies or chocolate. Oh, the chocolate one's intense. But they have a choice. I give them what? Doctrine. What? Reproof. And then I, get, I complete it with what? Correction. And then when they're good again, I give them more reward. Again, on what they do. Is that making sense? Does God do that? Yes. The moment you enter the blood covenant, you have five crowns. And how you live your life, you will either maintain them or lose them. This is a book on doctrine, reproof, and what? Correction. To help us grow to the maximum of our lives. Isn't that why we're in it? All right. How many here have ever had to go under the knife? I mean, go to surgery. They call it going under the knife. Now, anyone ever had surgery? Right? If you were going in there and it was a critical surgery, crit if you don't have it, you would die. So you get all ready and they prepare you and they're wheeling you into the operating room. Would it bother you if this was your surgeon? What's wrong with him being the surgeon? He may have all the knowledge. He may know all the answers. But what is he lacking? He hasn't made any what? Mistakes. He hasn't gained in what? Wisdom. He has no what? Understanding. Under, how, if you've ever seen parents, the first, if they have a child. They didn't do so good the first time. Ask, honestly, ask a parent, how'd you do on your first, the, the first child? How'd you do on the second child? Better. How'd you do on the third child? Better. By the time they've had three kids, they got it. The first child is always a disaster. I'm the first child. Okay. Even if he knew all the answers, what would still be obviously missing? When I left, when I left the military and I went to apply for a job, they asked me, you know, I, I had eight years military service and I was applying for jobs. And, they, and I applied for like 20 different companies and they all hired me. I'm like, whoa. And they, they didn't hire the guys from the Air Force. They didn't hire the guys from college. Only me. And, of course, I decided to stay in an extra four years. But the question is, why did they hire me? And I asked the, I said, I asked the guy that interviewed me, I said, why? He goes, because you've already made the mistakes. And he's right, I had. Only in the military can you blow up an airplane and say, I'm sorry, and get away with it. <laughs> you can blow up a $20 million piece of equipment and go, oops, I'm sorry. And that's what happens. They train you until you, you, can, you can do it in your sleep and you still make mistakes. 
But when you make that first mistake, you never what? You never forget it. And they understand that. So you've already made the mistakes. People coming out of college have made what? No mistakes. And if you hire them, guess what's going to happen? It's going to cost you. So if he showed up as your doctor to perform this vital surgery, would you have any questions? Now, I understand we're getting into artificial intelligence and robotics, which is really true. And two months ago, I guess it was three months ago, I guess it was three months ago, uh, uh, they had the new um, Da Vinci system, which doesn't require the doctor, the surgeon to operate. It actually goes in there and performs the heart surgery like in seconds. It doesn't require the chest to be opened up. So the doctor decided, well, I'm going to get a cup of tea, and he walked out of the room. The robot's moving so fast that it nicked one of the major arteries and sprayed all the man's blood all over the walls, everywhere. And this, the robot finished the job, but there was no blood left in the body. See, robots don't have what? Wisdom. They don't understand. So from the robot's point of view, it was a complete what? Success even though he was dead. So wisdom, what is wisdom? Wisdom comes from making what? Mistakes. If you don't make mistakes, then you... All right, you ever read the account of the Bible, of Peter in the Bible? How many mistakes did he make? Jesus was on him all the time. How many times did Abraham make mistakes? God was on his case what? All the time. If you don't try, you're not going to learn. If you don't make mistakes, you're not going to learn. They're going to hurt. But you'll grow. All growth is painful. How many remember adolescence? Was it painful? Uh, emotionally, mentally, you know, a little awkward. Parts of your body grew faster than other parts. People would laugh at you. You punch them in the face a couple times. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm not joking. I did. <laughs> but anyway, it is increased by what? Learning. Wisdom is increased by learning from what? Your mistakes and the what? Mistakes of others. If you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. You've got to try. You've got to apply what you learn. And in that application, you go, ah. You go, one, two, three. Ah. Now I get it. Now I understand. That's how it's supposed to go. What's understanding? You've done this so many times and gotten the results, wrong and right, that you now understand how it works. And now you can recognize mistakes, what? Before they happen. Is that intense? And when you go back in your life, all the mistakes you made, who gave you the doctrine? Nobody. Who gave you wisdom? Reproof. Nobody. You had to learn on your own. And it was damaging. It was hurtful. Unless you're one of the kids that just wanted that marshmallow now. Those kids, boy, they, they had that marshmallow and they delayed gratification. That word is delayed means not taking it there. Because someone gave them the doctrine and the reproof. You have to have a plan. So this thing was done to over 100 children and tracked those children for 40 years to see what happened to them. Of the 100 kids, 10 did not eat the marshmallow. Out of those 100 kids, 10 refused to eat the marshmallow. Of those 10, three became extremely successful professionals, doctors, judges, the top in society. 
because they delayed what? Ratification. They learned to work and prepare and then be ready, postponing what they wanted. So there's no way he could be a surgeon. There's no way. He's made no what? Mistakes. He's not learned from other people's mistakes. He is totally disqualified. He may be able to clean bedpans, but that's as far as he's able to go. So, back to our situation. We think, and I watch movies now, where a person has no background, no doctrine, no reproof, especially, the, you understand the problem? The first Star Wars could be interpreted that way, and people were afraid that, oh my God, terrorists are being inspired by this. So they rewrote Star Wars. And that's why the Star Wars now is so terrible. It was trying to get away from this, that concept so we don't radicalize people. So all those people were fired that wrote it, all got rid of it, and they wrote it brand new. So you don't have to have training. It just comes to you, and you become a magnificent Jedi with no doctrine, no reproof, no correction, and now you can take on the mighty bad guys. Bullshit. You got, but that's what's being taught. Because you have to undo. You don't need training. There's another one that comes out. It's called um, about some girl that's got this power of snow or something. And that's great. You feed that to little kids. What are they going to do? Don't need doctrine. I can be anything. I can do whatever I want to. I mean, I've never experienced no background, no training. I can still do it. No, you're going to get hurt. Just be clear that you know something does, and you say, that's what I believe, therefore I know it. That doesn't make it. You believe what you know because you were taught it or you experienced it. That's still not it. That doesn't work. What you believe defines who you are. That's a, that's a dumb thing too. You are not what people said. I don't care who your mother, your father, your aunt, your uncle, you are what the word of God says you are. You say it any other way, you're lessening what the word says and you're finding excuses not to become the best you can be. Is that making sense? How many identify with those kids? Which one? There was one for each type of person. Now you understand now, we will wait for you, you know, if you, if you don't eat it, and I come back, you can have, and she just, in the mouth it went. I want it what? Now. The greatest knowledge is the knowledge of yourself. I want it now. I know what I want. Well, that's great. So this is the problem. On this side, what is it? We know, what we know and believe is only a what? Shadow of truth. It's not the real thing. Whatever you think you know, it's wrong. Unless your name is God. And you fill all heaven and earth. And you've been around since the beginning of time. You don't know anything. Right teaching. And depending on who taught you, you can't be any greater than your teacher. Who taught you? If you get right teaching, it will propel you beyond the mistakes that we would have made for greater wisdom and understanding. If you're not getting the right teaching, then you're not going to get the right benefits. Is that making sense? We are the summation of gained knowledge, wisdom, and what? Understanding. So what makes her different from everybody else? Her experience, her knowledge, and her what? Understanding. What makes you different? You have your own what? Experience, knowledge, and understanding. So that's all you need. No, you need to continue to what? Grow and develop. Or else you're just going to be a little hamster. You're seeing a little hamster in a wheel? He runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and goes, absolutely what? Nowhere. The wheel goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, and then he's still at the same what? Place. And people wind up at the same place time and time again, and it never occurs to them that maybe they 
need some instruction, some reproof, or some correction. How many have ever been lost and refused to ask for directions? Because you know you're right. You just got to figure it out. Hey, which way is this way? All right. I always ask two people to make sure that two separate individuals, and they both say the same thing, that's the right one. <laughs> I don't trust nobody. Trust and what? Verify. To leave the purpose of God's word the, the, in the Eastern culture and what the word of God is, to leave the shadows of what we believe we know and begin to walk in the light of increased wisdom and what? Understanding. Of truth and reality as well as he who possesses them. Well, who has all knowledge and who has all understanding and wisdom? Who? Who's the sharpest person you have? If, you, if I want to learn mechanics, do I go to a guy that can't make a car work? Who do I go to to learn how to be a mechanic? If I want to learn to be a carpenter, I need someone who knows. And I say, let me see your work. Whoa, dude, you are good. Teach me. Whatever skills you want to have, whatever, whether it's in your heart, your soul, your mind, you need to have someone who's experienced. Someone who can prove it. Can't prove it? Go to someone who can. Is that making sense? Now, what gets me is that we don't, little kids, you ever, I don't know if you've been around little kids before, but if little kids are around and they don't know about something, they don't ask a parent who would obviously know, they ask each other, what do you think it is? I think it's this. What do you think it is? This, neither, doesn't it occur to the children there's no way the other child could know these things? Because they don't know it. And they always like to, and then the first thing they do is they lie. They tell you something that's not true. And the other kids believe it. Wouldn't it have been just easier to ask an adult? This is all making sense. It's weird because I've been in Asia for 14 years and then come back to the States was scary as shit. I mean, really scary. I did not want to come back, and I didn't like being here. I wanted to go back to Asia because I couldn't trust anybody. There was no integrity, and people would steal from you like that. In Asia, you leave, your, you leave something in a restaurant. You come back six months later, they still got it for you. Here, including your wallet with money in it. They don't take. They really believe that whatever they have is what God has given them, and all they're going to do is steward it. And if, they, if, you, if you wind up leaving your wallet behind, they will protect your wallet until you return. That weird? How long would that last in the United States? Do you realize that Japanese and South Koreans have to go through two weeks of school to keep themselves protected when they, before they live here or visit here? They have to understand that if you leave something, someone might steal it. And their question is, why? If they want to just ask me, I'll give it to them. I used to walk around and I would say, oh, that's a beautiful picture. And they would take it off their wall and give it to me. And I'm like, huh, what? No, 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 no. I, I didn't want it. No, no, no. You, it's yours. Because they believe that if they cannot part from something, that things are more valuable than people or God then it must be taken. It must be given. They have no problem losing all physical things. Nothing. I'm sorry? Yeah. So when they say, oh, that's a beautiful thing, then you're saying that things are more and more valuable. So here it is. They give it to you. And you will no longer be their friend. What do you say instead? Oh, what excellent taste you have in selecting that. You never say the thing. Never. Or else they give you the thing and you leave their life. Isn't that weird? So guess when you came to my apartment in Japan, how much stuff I had in my house. <laughs> no. 
I didn't, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. <laughs> oh, that's really nice, or I like that, and she goes, what? And when I came back to the States, I, people would say, oh, I like that, and I'd give it to them. And people would freak out. But that's what happens. I, I, I'd forgotten my own culture. I had to learn that people steal, lie, and will take everything they can from you. I had to remember, that's all. Do you understand the difference? How many locks are there in, in Japan? How many locks are on doors? There isn't any. No locks on doors. Are there cars locked? No. No car locks. You have to have those personally installed if you want them. Isn't that weird? No locks on doors. In fact, all you get is a little latch. The walls are made out of, you can punch through a wall. Nobody steals. You want something, just ask for it. They give it to you. The whole culture is like that. They have a prison, but guess who's in it? Mostly Americans. <laughs> Isn't that weird? So anyway, so this way, lie, cheat, steal, remember that? What's the most you can be? This way, that's what you can be. Does that help? The decision is always ours. This just takes too much time. But the future is, if someone told you 10 years ago that this, was, that this day would come, would you have believed him? How long ago was 10 years ago? How long ago was five years ago? Happens very quick, doesn't it? What's the next five years going to be for you? We have to make a decision where our lives are going to be. God wants us to prosper and be in what? Health. Even as our what? Soul prospers. Our soul don't prosper. That means gaining in wisdom. We don't gain in prosperity. We stay the same. And if your life is still the same at the same level, something's wrong. Proverbs 2, 10 and 11. When wisdom entereth in thy heart, and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall what? Keep thee. And people, this is, if your life can be like this, that's awesome. That's my goal, make my life like that. So what's the ruler? as to what is good and what is not. That's where God's word comes in. You see both sides. You can lie, cheat, steal, kill, destroy, or you can increase in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Which one does God's word say? Because God's word is the what? The ruler. Can you get things without doctrine, reproof, and correction? Sure. Will it last? It's not built. So when they told the child, you hold on to that, I, that marshmallow and don't eat it, you get a second one. And those that held off got a what? Second one. They got two. Those that ate it, it was what? Gone, and they had nothing else. How long was that whole time they had to wait? 15 minutes. That's it. Just 15 minutes. But to a four-year-old, 15 minutes is like four hours. Yeah. <laughs> it's all relative. Okay, it's time for a break.